Our topic today is using the solution management tools in Epicor version 10.2. I will explain the different menu items and how to use them to track and create solutions that can be exported and imported into another environment. I'll also highlight a few things that are different in version 10.2. The topics listed here are an outline of what I will cover today. Each topic will be discussed in more detail on the following slides. I will cover what is solution management, solution types, solution elements, solution workbench, the custom solution number and build number, database scripts, check sums on solutions, and then we will review solutions in Epicor 10.2. Hopefully this will get everyone to have a better understanding of how to use the solution workbench. So the solution management module can be used to group and distribute items all at the same time. Customizations, business activity queries, BAQs for short, dashboards, business process management items, BPMs for short, user-defined codes, extended properties, report information, and other items can be added to a solution which can be exported into one CAB file for import into another environment. A CAB file is a file with the extension .cab and is a compressed file which can contain a digital signature. <coughs> In the solution management groups shown in the previous slide, you can open the menu item for solution types. Here you can use the built-in solution types or define your own solution types. The all solution type contains the already established elements that Epicor has provided in solution management. Use the blank solution type for display only of elements based on user activity. Later, you can use that information to create your own custom elements or solution types. Define your own solution types to track items as needed and use the elements already available to create your own elements to track in your custom solution type. The solution elements maintenance can be used to create and maintain solution elements. These elements define groups of Epicor items you can track or add into your solution. Here we can see the built-in elements that Epicor can track. In addition, we can create our own elements that can be tracked. To start really using a solution, you need to open Solution Workbench and create a solution by giving it a name, description, and choosing the solution type. Then you can choose to add to the solution to add already existing elements such as BAQs, dashboards, reports, etc. Add existing file contents and add existing user-defined items such as adapters and results. Or once you have chosen to start tracking solution, you can choose to add the tracked items to your new solution for items that do not yet exist or changed items. Once you have all the items in your solution, you can go to Actions menu item in the Solution Workbench and then choose Build Solution to create your CAB file for the solution. You can choose to encrypt the source code, create code documentation, and or prompt for the file location. Most often the last checkbox is all that is required unless you need a more secure file then click the build button when you are ready to export your solution. Then in your new environment you can choose to import your solution file by going to the actions menu in solution workbench and choosing install solution. You can browse to the exported solution file and then notice that the hash is automatically listed in the validation box since our export had the validation file in the same folder. You will also choose the settings and conflict resolution options that you would like to be enforced during your install. Then click on the install button at the bottom, which is not shown here due to picture space requirements. In version 10.2, Epicor now added a field labeled solution reference to enter a custom version of the solution. The creator of a solution can use their own version tracking information for a solution package. 
This field is for informational purposes only. Each solution is also now provided with a build number. Epicor automatically displays the read-only field in the build iteration box. When the solution is installed in another environment, Epicor checks this value to verify if you are trying to install an older version. A warning message appears indicating you are attempting to overwrite a newer build. In Epicor 10.2 you can now use the Add to Solution feature to add database scripts or SQL scripts into a solution. When the solution is installed on a system use your Run Database Script Runner action found under your database in database server management in the Epicor Admin Console. You can enter notes in the solution workbench to describe the function of each script. Remember, it is the responsibility of the script creator to write an SQL statement that can safely be executed on your system. Database scripts added to a solution are not validated by the solution workbench and are custom company specific. Check some solutions. When you generate a solution file, the dot cab file, it will be associated with a checksum. The checksum is a hash value generated using the SHA-2 algorithm and displays during the build solution. Notice the validation hash above. Also a text file containing the hash string is automatically generated in the same output folder as a cab file. When a solution is installed, the user can use the checksum to verify authenticity of a solution. The verification is performed by entering a hash key in the validation text field found on the install solution dialog. This field is optional. Leaving it blank ignores the validation check. If the validation text file is in the same folder with the .cab file, the hash will populate in the text box without having to manually copy it in. Now we'll take a look at building solutions in Epicor version 10.2. As mentioned, Epicor has a menu item under System Management named Solution Management, which contains the three different menu items you'll need to build a solution. So first we look at the solution type maintenance and we can see Epicor has two built-in types which is the blank solution type or the all solution type. And if we bring in the all we can see that includes all the different uh, elements that Epicor has available for tracking by default. If we look at the solution element entry we can see that Epicor actually has 24 different element types and you can add your own custom element elements that you would like to track. So Epicor has these available by default and you could add your own if you'd like to. And then the meat of building a solution happens in the solution workbench. So you need to give your solution a name and we can just call it Epicor Solution. We have to tell it one of the types that we want to use and we can put any other additional information on the side here. If we want to say PAQs and dashboards and if we want to we can put in a version number here. So we'll go ahead and save that header information. We can also add any notes if we wanted to there. But then once we're ready to actually start adding to our solution we'll click the add to solution button. And here are the different 24 different elements that Epicor has available and we're going to just do a couple of dashboards and then some BAQs. So we'll go ahead and pick dashboards first. If you're going to combine 
dashboards and BAQs in the same solution, you'll probably want to do dashboards first because if there already are certain dashboards or BAQs that exist in your dashboards, they will be brought in with your dashboards if you answer yes to the question. So you're going to highlight which elements you want to search for items and then click the search and then find any of the dashboards that you want to bring in. Unfortunately this part is not very easy to tell which ones are system dashboards because Epicor doesn't have a checkbox to show system and we do know the ones that are starting with a Z are Epicor dashboards I'm going to just pick a couple and hope that they're not uh, system dashboards, but even if they are, it won't hurt for our demonstration purposes. Okay, so the two that we chose are now shown on the bottom, and we're going to click Add to Solution. And now, because each dashboard has different BAQs attached to them, it asks you if you want to add them. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And now if we look at the solutions tab, we can see the two dashboards that we brought in are there. And we can see that there's also six um, queries that were brought in based on the needs of the two dashboards. So. Now if we want to go ahead and add any other BAQs to our solution, we can go to Add to Solution, select the BAQ element, and search for BAQs. And here it's a little bit easier to tell some of the system ones. Those that start with COM, com I guess it's supposed to be COMMON, and then those that start with Z, our system BAQs. So we're going to pick any that are in between the common and the Z ones. Um, and we can see that we already had one of those, the updatable part one. Maybe it's not in the list once it's already picked. So anyway, we'll choose these and then say OK and again we'll see them in the bottom here and then we'll say add to solution so there was six and now there's 15 queries if we click on that row we'll see the diff 15 different ones that are in there so you can continue adding different elements to your solution that you would like to build and then export and import. We're going to just stop here for the demonstration purposes and we're going to pretend we have everything that we want in our solution. So we're going to go to actions and then we're going to go to build solution. And you can click all three boxes but most often you'll just probably click the last box unless you need additional security on your file. And then you'll want to click the build button and then it's going to prompt you for where you want your file to go. I'm going to just put it on our desktop and then you'll see it doing the steps and then when it's done towards the bottom you'll see a successful message. So here we can see it says successfully created the file, solution cab file. So we'll close that. So now we don't have another environment to import this into, so we're going to just go ahead and pretend that we're importing it into another environment, but we'll do it in the same environment. So here we can see the cab file, and then here is the text file with the algorithm hash. So in order to import it in, we'll open Solution Workbench and go right to Actions and say Install Solution. Browse for your solution file and open that. 
and then you can see the validation text is automatically brought in because we had the hash file in the same folder that we have our cab file. So here you would choose the options that you would like to do when you install your software, your solution. Do you only want to target the current company? Do you want to remove directives with matching names? Do you want to delete the previous install? You also want to look at the conflict resolution options for file conflicts. Do you want to automatically overwrite duplicate files or prompt for each file conflict? And the same for data conflicts. Do you want to automatically overwrite duplicate data or prompt for each data conflict? Once you're happy with all your choices, you would click the install button. Keep in mind if you choose the prompt for each file conflict, conflict or each data conflict, it will be asking you every time to say OK to overwrite it or not OK if you don't want to overwrite it. So you might be answering a lot of messages if you have a lot of files in your solution. We're not going to actually click the install because we already have these PAQs and dashboards in this environment you will get a log down here in the installation output that you can copy if you need to if there were any problems if you need to possibly redo a solution to bring in any failed files for example so I'm just gonna go ahead and close this since we're not actually gonna do that solution management can be very useful as you create and add new custom items to Epicor and move along in upgrading to different versions of Epicor. They can also be a useful tool for keeping point of reference versions of your customizations. Maybe you want to keep monthly, yearly solution files. And then ask yourself, do you need to roll back to an earlier version into a test environment? And then export and import a particular item into live. Feel free to add any questions in the comments or add any feedback into the comments on this YouTube video. Thank you for watching this video and we hope you enjoy any future videos on our Code of Bears YouTube webpage.